Lenz's law is how we determine the direction of current flow in a loop whose flux is changing somehow. Remember how we talked about that little negative in Faraday's law? Faraday's law looks like this. EMF is negative N times uh, change in flux divided by change in time. And we said that negative tells us that energy has to be conserved. Whatever energy was used um, spinning the loop of wire or changing the strength of the magnetic field, the direction of the current flow through your loop has to be in such a direction that it accounts for that energy. Okay, That's going to make a little bit more sense as we move forward here. So let's imagine a loop of wire or a set of loops of wire. Here we go. Um, and let's say that I am taking a magnetic field and I am increasing the field inside the loops. Okay, if you can tell, that's my north pole right over there. My north pole has a field that points in that direction, right? Magnetic field lines from this magnet would point out the north side and back into the south side, right? So my, my field from this magnet right over here at a point over here that I'm going to put into the loops, that direction is to my left. Okay, I have no idea. This cameras flip directions sometimes, so it's to my left. <laughs> Hopefully it actually is that way for you. Okay. <clears throat> um, if I put it in here, I'm increasing the field, I'm increasing the flux in that direction. Okay, so here's what happens. The loops then will say, okay, we need to make a current that opposes the change that just happened. Okay, so I just increased the field in that direction. So the loops will make a current, and that current makes its own field. Right? We just said that whenever you have, we just said, we know um, from studying electric fields that whenever you run a current through a loop of wire, you can use your right hand rule to determine the direction of the magnetic field inside those loops. Right? So when you've got a current running through a loop of wire, it produces a magnetic field. So let's say that I'm increasing my magnetic field in this direction, and then let's say that my loops go, okay, increasing the field in that direction changes the flux, that produces an EMF, which produces a current in the wires, right? And let's say then that our current is going this way, right, around the loops, just for the sake of an experiment. If that were the case, then my field that the loops are producing would be pointed that direction, which is the same direction as my original field that I was putting into the, into the loops, right? So now you've got another field that's in the loops, that's changing in the loops, which would create more current, more field, more current, more field, and you would just get a runaway amount of energy. Hopefully that makes sense. So here's, here's what Lenz's law says. If I'm going to take a field and increase my field in a, in a loop of wire, not necessarily just increase, but change my field in a loop of wire, the loops of wire will create a field that opposes that change. Okay, so here's what we're going to say. Uh, I'm increasing my field through my loops in that direction, that way my loops are going to then go, oh, we need to return this back to equilibrium. And so your loop of wire is going to say, we need a field then in that direction. I'm increasing the field using my magnet. I'm increasing my field in that direction. And so then the loops are going to make the opposite field. They're going to increase their own field in that direction. And when that happens, we do, or we do that by creating a current in the loops this way. So if you take a look at this side, that would be current flowing this way around the loops of wire. That would produce the correct magnetic field to oppose the change that caused it. Okay, The verbal explanation of that never works very well. 
And so what we need to do is we need to do a few examples here. Now, if we were in class, I would see your the recognition in your faces once we get to example number three and you get how it works and it's such a satisfying time but unfortunately I just have to hope and believe that this is going to make sense to you okay so all this text here in the notes that uh, well we're not going to read it because I just explained it verbally okay feel free to read it yourself same thing with these diagrams the diagrams are just a right hand rule review the only one that we actually need here is number three, a solenoid as an electromagnet. That's the curled fingers right hand rule. Okay, but we're going to get down to some examples. Here's example one. You have a field, or you have a loop of wire here. See, A, B, C, D, we've just named the corners. And it is being um, slid into the magnetic field. So at this point, right at the beginning, before any movement actually takes place, you've got this area over here. That's how much flux there is. But we are taking this wire loop and we're moving it to the right. And what that means is that the flux is going to increase in the loop, right? Because there's, there's an empty space in the loop right now that has no flux in it. And so when we start moving it to the right, that empty space gets smaller and smaller as the loop fills up with more magnetic field. Okay, so the flux is increasing into the page. Okay, see how the magnetic field is pointing into the page, hence all the X's. We get then a flux increasing into the page. So what is the change in flux due to the original magnetic field? Okay, so the original magnetic field are these X's over here, right? That's the one that's just there, regardless of what the loops are doing. So our field is pointing into the page, and because we're moving the loop into the magnetic field, the flux is increasing. Okay, the flux through those loops is increasing. And just for good measure, I'm going to put right down the direction of the field as well, increasing into the page. Okay, and so since that's the change that's happening to the loops, the flux is increasing and it's pointed into the page, in what direction does the induced magnetic field point? So when it says the induced magnetic field, it's the one that the loop itself is going to make to counter that change that happened to it. Okay, so the original flux, or the flux due to the original field, is increasing into the page, which means that the loop is going to go, uh-oh, we need to return it to equilibrium. So we're going to make the opposite field. So increasing into the page, in order to decrease it back to the original, it's going to create a field that's pointing out of the page. Okay, so the induced field points out of the page. And since that field, since the induced field, the field that the, that the loop is making, is pointing out of the page, then we can use our right-hand rule. So your, dire your thumb direction should be up out of the page, and so your finger direction should be curled counterclockwise, right? So in what direction does the induced current flow in the loop? That would be counterclockwise. Okay, so we're figuring out what's, what's the change that's happening, what direction does the induced field need to be in order to counter that change, and, uh, and because of that field, what direction must the current be flowing? Those are our three steps. Okay, let's try the second one. Example two. So we've got our magnetic field pointing through that loop, and the question is, what direction is the current going to be flowing? Is it going to be flowing from A to C to B, like that? Or is it going to be flowing from B to C to A that way? Okay, that's what we're going for. Clockwise or counterclockwise. So what is the change in flux due to the original magnetic field? So the original magnetic field over here 
we've got field lines, which it shows you, and it tells us that the velocity or the movement of the magnet is that direction. And so the flux is going to be increasing, right? Because as you move the magnet into that loop, the strength of the magnetic field is getting bigger. So that's, whoa, apparently increasing. Let's try that again. Increasing. And again, just for good measure, I'm going to write down the direction to the right. Okay, now in what direction does the induced magnetic field point? Remember, the induced magnetic field is the field that the loop itself is creating to counter that change that's happening to it. So the, the flux is increasing to the right, and so the loops are going to make a field pointing to the left to restore balance, to restore the equilibrium from the beginning. And so that means that if your field is pointing, if your induced field is pointing to your left, that means that the field, or that means that the current is going to be flowing from B to C to A. Try it yourself, okay? Because I know, again, the screen thing, watching somebody else do it who may or may not be reversed, um, just can be confusing. So I'd like you to try that on your own as well. So in what direction does the induced magnetic field point? It must point to the left, the opposite of the change that's creating it, to the left. And that means the direction of the induced current flow would be counterclockwise again, or from B to C to A. So B to C to A, or counterclockwise. Okay, before you watch the next part of the video, please try the third one on your own. Pause here. Okay, here's the third one. In this case, we are taking this magnet and moving it out of the loops, which means that the amount of field in the loops is going to be decreasing, right? As we move that magnet away, the field inside the loop is decreasing in strength. And so the change in flux due to the original magnetic field is decreasing. Okay, it's decreasing, but it is still pointing to the right. So we need to not forget that part. So it's decreasing, it's pointing to the right, but it's decreasing. And so that means the loops are going to try to restore it to what it was before, which means the loops are going to make some more field to the right. Right, because we're, we're lessening the field that was pointing to the right, we need more rightward field in order to restore it back to what it was. And so the induced magnetic field is going to point to the right as well. Okay, to restore it to what it was. And if that is the case, then we use our right hand rule to figure out what the direction of the current flow is, and that would be clockwise from A to C to B. Clockwise. Okay, now, if that didn't click in your brain immediately, that's totally fine. That's a very common experience. Please do the practice. This is going to make much more sense after you try it a whole bunch of times.